Okay, and continuing with our congruent triangles, uh, look at section chapter 4, 6. And that section is on isosceles triangles, okay? Now a little background music, hope it's not too loud. Uh, it's the middle of December here in the Decatur, and obviously we're in the middle of celebrating holidays and Christmas, and so a little background mood music. Turn it down just a little bit. Uh, my wish for you during this season is that it would be a good family time, time for you to have joy and some happiness with your family and get together and celebrate and not be too stressful as we look at the holidays and the uh, uh, time off from school. But let's get back to this so we can pass this test next week. I saw some of these triangles. One of the ways I know... <laughs> Sounds sort of crazy. To remember how to spell the word isosceles is S-O-S. I-S-O-S. And um, before I really understood isosceles triangles, I memorized everything. I needed an S-O-S. Okay, I needed to save my ship. Save our ship. And so that's how I remember how to spell it is I-S-O-S. C-E-L-E-S. So I don't know if that will help you or not. Anyway, isosceles triangles are unique triangles. There's an awful lot to be said about them. They're used in construction tremendously. They're used in, um, in for good reason. There's a lot of characteristics of isosceles triangles that we're going to examine, uh, be using the rest of the year uh, to get into uh, and show you how to use them. And once you understand those characteristics and those uh, unique uh, features of isosceles triangles, Hopefully it will make some of the things we do the rest of the year a whole lot easier. Sosceles triangle is basically a triangle that has at least two sides congruent. At least two sides. It means it can have three sides congruent. We're going to look at the situation where at least two sides are congruent. If the third side is congruent, well, pick two of them to be the legs and pick the other one to be the base. We have triangle ABC. Now, vertex A or A, point A or corner A is what we call the vertex. Okay? And angle A is the vertex angle. Okay? It connects the two legs and the two legs are congruent. In this particular case, leg AC or segment AC is a leg and segment AB is a leg. And notice something about the legs. <clears throat> What's the same about the legs? That's right. The legs both have point A in them. Why? Because, well, that's the joint. That's the hinge where the legs meet. Okay, the legs meet at the vertex, so they're both going to have A in them. Okay, it's one thing about the legs. Somebody says A is the vertex angle or X is the vertex angle. You know that both legs are going to have X in them. If A is the vertex angle, then both of them, both the legs are going to have A in it. Now the other two corners, whoops, erase that. The other two corners form what we call the base angles. Angle B and angle C are the base angles. Now the base angles are congruent. Okay? Just like the legs are congruent, the base angles are congruent. We're going to look at exactly why in a little bit. The legs are also congruent. Those are the characteristics of isosceles triangle. Legs are congruent. The base angles are congruent. Okay? Now, the theorems that we have to look at on this are like this. We have an isosceles triangle theorem. We're going to abbreviate I triangle T. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about talking about... Uh, Triangles, how do we know that a triangle is scalene if all we're given are the angles? Said so something like this, all the angles have to be different. None of the angles can be congruent. If none of the angles are congruent, then all the sides are different and none of the sides are congruent. If any of the angles are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. Okay? So let's take the case where we have two sides are congruent. 
the angles opposite them are also going to be congruent. Well, what if we have an equilateral triangle? Well, then guess what? All three angles would be congruent and all three sides would be congruent. Okay, it's a characteristic of triangles. Now, the converse of that is also true. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. So if we're given a characteristic of a triangle that says, hey, angle B and angle C are congruent, what do we know about segment AB and segment AC? The segments opposite those angles are also congruent. Okay? So if we have an equilateral triangle and all the angles are congruent, then all the sides opposite those angles are going to be congruent also. Okay, very important characteristics of isosceles triangles. These two theorems, isosceles triangle theorem and its converse. Okay, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. The converse, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Now we're going to go into and look at some more details, characteristics of uh, isosceles triangles. Okay, let's talk about some of the unique characteristics of an isosceles triangle. I left this over here so we can look at it. Here's an acute isosceles triangle, and I drew just for difference here an obtuse isosceles triangle. So we have obtuse isosceles triangle X, Y, and Z. Now angle X is going to be the what? What's the definition or what name do we give angle X? That's right, angle X is going to be the vertex angle. Okay? Now, how about angle Y? What's angle Y going to be? Look down here, B and C are what? So angle Y is going to be a base angle. Okay? How about angle Z? Oh, angle Y and Z are base angles and they are congruent. Notice we mark this according to the rules. How about XY? What is XY going to be? XY is, well, it contains the vertex, the vertex angle, okay, so that has to be a leg. And how about XZ? Well, that has to be a leg. And what is YZ? That's going to be the base. Okay, so we've defined everything. Got that all taken care of. Now, let's look at some unique characteristics of this. We can actually prove some of this, and as we go along throughout the year, we will. If I drop what we call a perpendicular bisector from X to a point W, okay, I'm going to come over here and say XW is perpendicular bisector of segment YZ are the base. Well, that immediately says that what? YW is congruent to ZW. Why? Because if it's a perpendicular bisector, okay? Now, look at this by side, angle, side, side, angle, side, we know that what? Triangle X, Y, W is congruent to triangle X, Z, W, Y, side, angle, side, postulate. What's another way we can say it? Well, wow, what do we know about this right here? That segment is equal to itself or congruent to itself by reflexive property. So we can say also by the side, side, side postulate. Okay? So we have multiple ways. We know this is perpendicular, so we also know that what? These are right angles, so we can also say by the angle, side, angle postulate. So multiple ways. That also means that all the parts of that triangle are equal to each other. 
Well, what else does that mean? Let's fill it in. We know this is equal to this over here. What does that mean about this one? Once we've proven that those two triangles are congruent, then all of the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So basically what we have is anytime we drop a perpendicular bisector from the vertex to the base, we create two congruent what type of triangles? By doing this right here, segment X W creates two congruent right triangles. Okay? Now, all of the characteristics of the right triangles can be used. We can use Pythagorean theorem to find the sides if we need to. If we know two of the sides, we can find the third side. If we know two sides, we can find the, we know the two legs, and we can find the hypotenuse. Okay? So there are multiple ways for us to use this. This is a very important concept. Sometime we'll go back and prove it. A very important concept of isosceles triangles. When we create, we drop the perpendicular bisector of YZ, or the base, from the vertex, we create two congruent right triangles. Okay? Very, very powerful. Very, very useful. It's one of the reasons why isosceles triangles are used in construction. Why? Because we can brace it in such a way that makes it extremely strong. It can contain a tremendous amount of uh, force. It can withstand a tremendous amount of force with the least amount of material. Very important. Now let's do some sample problems. And we'll get through with isosceles triangles.